this morning while the boys are at school. Ola and I are going to come up here and do as much work together on the barn as we can. We have the new drums from the door company that should correct the issue that we were having of the door not opening fully. So I'm going to get started changing out these drums and while I do that Ola is going to go ahead to get started working on the insulation for the walls to try to finish that part up as well. I decided the simplest method for me was to unwind the springs and then simply remove the support bracket from the end of the torsion bar and slide the drum off that side and then reassemble it. The representative for the door company told me that with this door configuration and these new drums that these springs should be wound to 10.4 rotations to be fully loaded correctly with the door struts and all the weight of the door. But he recommended that I probably start off just a little bit lighter than that just to make sure. So I clamped a set of vice grips on the door track to make sure that it couldn't move no matter what and then went to installing the door struts on the back of each panel. Based on his recommendation to start out light with the springs, I decided to stop at 9.5 rotations and see how it went. It wouldn't be a difficult thing to get back up and add another quarter, half, or one rotation to get things where it needed to be if it wasn't quite right. However, at 9.5 rotations, the door went up just fine. It feels like it could be just a little bit tighter, but for now we're going to leave it there. The only other problem I had is the pull-down rope they sent was way too short, so I'll have to get a new piece of rope for that tomorrow. Now that the door is all set and situated and working properly, we can both come together and work on this insulation. We don't have that much left to do, but we figured we could probably get it all taken care of today and be done with it finally. These bats come 48 inches long and our cut needs to be about 40. So we end up with about a seven or eight inch strip that we cut off of the end. And we're using that little waste strip to tear apart and use little three or four inch thickness pieces to stuff in between the beam and the wall and any of the little gaps that are tough to get the bat to set into naturally. So I start with that little piece of scrap and tuck it between the beam and the plywood. And then I pull the paper back and tuck the bat in between the beam and the girt so that it sits in there nicely. I'm also making a notch at the top of the bat so that it will sit into there and not be compressed too tight. Can I throw it? Well, you throw me the whole box or just one thing? I'll throw you the whole box. Wouldn't that be safer? Yeah. A lot less risk of staples. <laughs> Falling? <Scattering>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Uh-huh. Still risk. Did you throw just, them down? Just less risk. What are you doing? I throw gave them, them to you. Just throw them down. Those couple of strands of, or strips of staples looked at me like. You're like, they I gave me a, They gave me a bad look and I'm like, dude, you do not want to step to this. <laughs> Anytime we work together on a project, the day ends up being filled with silly little comments that keep us chuckling and leaves a lighthearted attitude pretty much all day. So I had some time to talk to Aspen today about her her uh, deer leg that she brought over. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, so tell me how you got it. And she's like, you know, I'm a very friendly dog uh -huh. and I make friends really easy. Uh -huh. And I don't discriminate, and I think she hung out with the coyotes that morning. And I'm thinking they had a party, and they're like, white elephant gift. 
here's a deer leg. And she goes, wow, thanks. And she brought it home. Yeah, I think you're right. Hang around with the wrong crowd. Yeah, but she doesn't care. One of these days it'll get her in trouble and she'll care. So we brought the truck in, shoveled off the snow and brought it in. There's a bunch of ice layer in there. We brought that in so that it can melt overnight. There's a good chance, maybe, maybe, there's a good chance we're gonna go get drywall tomorrow for the ceiling. Uh, I got the trailer dug out and I got it cleared off, but it was everything I could do to get it up here with the tractor and the chains on the tractor. So I just knew there was no way, if it was loaded fully with all of the drywall, there's no way my truck was going to make it up with the dead weight behind. <clears throat> so instead, we're going to try to get ready to put the drywall on the truck, make multiple trips as needed. It's just going to be safer. The weight's over the truck. It's over the driving wheels. It'll definitely make it up the hill with the weight. It's not so overwhelming when we have a ton of like supplies here. So yeah, we won't be. when we get through <laughs> one layer of supplies, then we can go get more. Yeah, that's true. So. Especially with drywall, because we'll have all the wall drywall sitting mm -hmm. and it'll be in the way for doing the ceilings. Yeah. And that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I, when I mud and tape, I put more mud on the floor <laughs> than I do on the no, ceiling. You're better than that. <laughs> <laughs> but we got all of the dry, all of the insulation finished on all the walls the only little bits we got is in the bat in the battery room and the kitchen yeah. walls in those walls that will be easy. that's minor so that's good i feel great about it we're hitting cold temperatures and um we're starting to get we're going to get overnight negative like six i think negative i six, six four yeah. and four. we have like three days in a row of negative temperatures overnight with like highs of in the eight and 10 and 12. We have Fahrenheit. a snow coming tomorrow. Oh. However, we don't know how many inches. It's been mild and that's been good because we've had a break from plowing. And today was supposed to be a snow day, like 60% and mm -hmm. it's been snowy, but it's not snowed. I'm, I'm okay favorite, with that right now. <laughs> I would love to see a snow day where the snow just goes up. Like instead of down, <laughs> it just goes up. <laughs> the storm we had, managed to clear out we got a little bit of sun 
poking through some of the sky. And uh, we didn't get a ton of snow, a couple of inches, it's not bad, but it's pretty narrow in a few spots on the main road. It's been plowed, but I need to go and see if we can get it pushed open a little bit wider in a couple of spots for sure. So I'm gonna go down and see if I can do that. Should be too bad. I've got the tractor pulled in yesterday, which was really nice. Um, the door works. <laughs> so it's nice to bring it in. I didn't have a fire in here or anything, but it was still snowing last night. So I thought, well, I'll bring it in anyway and not have the seat all covered in snow. And we did get back yesterday from town and we got our first bit of drywall in. So we got that unloaded in here. Should be enough for the whole ceiling. So we're gonna hit the whole ceiling first. And then once that's up, we'll move on to the walls and frame in this upstairs room. I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the tractor and go open up a few spots that are pretty rough and just make a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna probably get a fire going in here as well. So that when I get back with the tractor, I can park it in here and let it thaw. Should be a nice treatment for once for the tractor. <laughs> it's such a rewarding feeling to come up here after a little bit of a snowstorm and throw open the door to the shop and be able to pull the tractor out and put it to work without having to dig all the snow off and unbury it from whatever happened overnight. I thought I'd snow blow my road on the way down since I was going anyway, but the wind was not in my favor. It kept changing directions, and though it wasn't very heavy, it was just enough to make the light fluffy snow dust cloud me no matter which direction I went. I tried opening up the discharge chute to shoot it farther, and it just shot it higher, which meant that the dust cloud was in the air longer and could drift more. So I thought, let's go back to midway point and just blow it and do what I can to avoid the dust cloud and do what we can to get it widened out. For the most part, it wasn't too bad, with the exception that I'd come around a corner and the topography would change or the tree systems would change and my wind direction angle would change all those things kept varying and so i ended up just shooting in any direction i could find that wasn't covering me in the cloud dust and do what i could to get rid of the stuff that had been plowed to the side my main focus was really just to widen out any really narrow spots and try to open up a couple of these pull out points so that we could pass by each other in the coming days without having any problems a couple of sections on this road, I decided it didn't matter which direction I blew the snow, I was going to get covered either way. So ultimately I decided, that's enough, I'll go to the bottom and start the other direction and see if I can avoid the dust cloud in that way. Several sections of this road from this point down, it doesn't really matter which side the snow goes to. Either way, when it melts, this road is steep enough that the water is either going to go down the road or along the road rather than across and getting down to the creek. Although changing directions helped, it was still blowing it everywhere and still floating in the wind. So I set the chute as low as I could just to get it back to ground soon as I could. As long as it goes up and over the main bank, that's all that really matters. That's five, six feet away from the road and that's plenty that it's going to run off and go toward the creek. Ultimately, the change in direction helped substantially, and I was able to get rid of most of the windrow of snow from plowing, even though I had to still fiddle around with things a little bit now and then. The snow plowing had done its job well, and had made sure that the road was open and drivable and safe. So me coming back through and snow blowing isn't absolutely necessary, but if I can get this windrow lifted and thrown over the bank, it'll make it easier for plowing any future snow that comes, as well as open up these wide spots so that we can get through and be able to pass by each other a little bit safer. So since it's not snowing out today, 
and there's patches of sunlight now and then. I thought, it's as good a day as any, as long as I can work with this wind problem. Looks like my coupling came off. A <laughs> chain's seen better days. It doesn't actually flex and do any actual driving. It just uses both double links as a connector. So it looks like I'm done snow blowing for the day. I'll take her back home and I'll put it in the barn and let everything thaw out. This spot is just narrow and I was just trying to open it up. We almost had it. I'm having a hard time on this spot. It's like it's compacted hard enough on this side, either from wheel track or snow blowing or from plowing, whatever but it's packed up enough that I'm floating up onto it instead of cutting into it. And I could probably do a little bit of adjusting on the blade angle, try a few things that way to get it to cut in better, but honestly, it's just a matter of trying to keep it open and drivable. And you could drive on that snowpack just fine, so. After the first time or two of using this snowblower, I noticed that that chain was not in good condition. I saw it then, and when I went to get the hydraulic fittings to connect the hydraulics, I looked at picking up some chain then. The only problem was, I could only buy it in a 10 foot length, and that's about 11 inches of chain. So I wasn't going to spend that kind of money for that. I knew I'd have to go to a specialty shop to either get it as a pre-cut coupling, or buy it by the foot. So I shoveled off the bulk of the snow and parked it into the shop for the evening. We had a fire in here in the evening to kind of warm things up and take the chill off. We didn't come up and feed it at night at all. We didn't come up after dinner and feed it. And the fact that I came up this morning about 8.30 and it was uh, 20 degrees inside, which not bad considering it was negative five outside. Started a fire, got it going. It's warming up in here. It wasn't warm enough overnight to thaw the snow off the tractor. It was, you know, like I said, warmed up in here yesterday or last night but not enough compared to the five degrees so <clears throat> um it's warming up now it's about 45 in here i've got my little propane torpedo heater going mostly just to help thaw the last little bit of stuff off of the tractor plus the forest air unit on there will help circulate some of the heat that's in the building i gotta take the tractor out so i don't want it all to be warm air loss I'm going to try to just warm things up a little bit in here first. In the meantime, we picked up a replacement portable generator. I'm going to get that thing unboxed and put together. I think it's all pretty much ready to go in the box. It just probably doesn't come with oil in the engine and a couple things like that. So just going to get it out, get everything checked over, make sure it's ready to go and get it fired up. I had to go pick up the feed for the pigs this morning. I've got a big 1,500 pound tote on the back of my truck. So I'm gonna get the tractor thawed for a little bit and then I'll go out with the tractor and get that loaded off and taken down to our Connex where we keep it and keeps the rodents out of it for now. My uh, clutch parts for the Polaris came in today. So I've got to go pick them up. See if we can get Ranger back into service finally. It's only been five days, but it sure feels like a long time when you rely on it daily. So we're gonna get that back in order, generator back in order panels are cleared today it's cold as all get out but we're making good power lots of sun supposed to have that for the next couple of days so power won't be an issue uh, I refilled my gasoline tank the other day and when I went into town this morning to pick up the boys I filled up my diesel tank on my truck so so we've got our bulk tanks back in order and the fuel and we got plenty of propane plenty of wood fire I think we've got all the energy sources we need worked out now we just need to get the rest of the tools back in order and we'll be in good shape
that's about as much installation as there is to it other than oil the generators are what they call a dual fuel runs on gasoline has a selector valve right here that we can set it for to run at gasoline or run on propane should be pretty much ready to go out the box and wouldn't you know it see all that corrosion right there on the ground terminal that's about par for some things I'll take that apart real quick and get it cleaned up but I bet that battery is completely dead so we'll probably have to just pull start at the first couple it does have the pull start still so that's good and that should charge that little battery back up it shouldn't take long to charge it back up either hose that comes with it's got a quick connector just quick connect onto there and thread it to your tank well, that's pretty slick convenient we always have a couple of backup propane tanks kicking around apparently not always do we have a full tank of gasoline sitting around so It's a brand new engine and it's shipped without any oil so I generally like to get the oil in and then move it by hand like that a few times and try to get some things at least a little bit pre lubricated before we fire it up for the first time. Maybe it is going to start. Maybe it does have some gusto in it. Now I guess out of curiosity's sake, I had to hook it up to the propane. But it's also good to connect it to the propane and run it that way. See the difference, make sure I know all the system and familiar with it before I before I need to do that in a pinch. <laughs> it's probably about as dummy proof as you can make it. The fact that they've incorporated the gas and propane selector right into the on off switch. Pretty simple. So we go the propane side instead of the gasoline side. This should fire up, I guess. Well, cool. The other thing that's kind of a, I don't know, I guess it's kind of nice about the propane is in certain situations, I guess, if you had to run this, like if I needed to run this inside the shop here, it's going to put out a heck of a lot less emissions on propane than it will on gasoline. So it's a lot safer that way, but I don't intend on needing to run it inside the shop like this, it's just for this startup moment and stuff. One little project down, 10 more to go. With the new generator all ready to go and everything cleaned up from there, it's time to get this pig feed taken off the truck and put away properly. We're pretty excited about this new batch of pig feed that we've got. We worked with our local grain mill and their animal nutritionist 
to try to come up with a special formulation of feed for these specific Mangalitsa pigs that we're raising. We spoke in length about how we intend to turn the pigs out into a pastured area of the forest here to let them browse and roam, as well as supplementing them with grain and hay forage. These Mangalitsas are a lard pig variety, meaning that they have a higher percentage of body fat to body weight. They are also recognized as having a very dark, rich red meat that develops slowly over time, and they're well renowned for their lard quality and their fat texture and taste. The rendered lard is said to be prized by bakers, and the fat is said to be perfect for things such as salami. Some of the research that we've done, however, indicates that the typical hog feed that's available in our area, which uses soy meal as a protein supplement, may not be the most desirable for this specific breed. The oil in the soy meal is said to have a slight bitter flavor, and that flavor is absorbed into the fat layer of the pig and can leave a little bit bitter flavor to the lard. Farmers in other regions who raise these pigs are known to use things like hazelnuts or acorns to finish these pigs off, which have a much sweeter and more desirable flavor in the oil. Those sources are not available for us in this region for a reasonable price. So the nutritionist worked out a balance to remove the soy from the feed and supplement it with barley and distiller's corn to keep the nutritional value appropriate. These pigs have a slower metabolism than commercially raised lean pigs, and therefore they take a lot longer to grow out. A lean pig typically grows from wean to butcher at six months, and these are going to be about 15 months before they'll be butchered. We're real excited to see how they develop on this new feed over the next nine months before we finish them out and see just how good they taste.